Hello and welcome to this IO Integration Alliance Partner webinar, How to Turbocharge Your Creative Process. My name is Alan Porter. I am Director of Product Marketing at Nuxio. According to a lot of research that we've Nuxio has done with its customers recently, brands and product companies are really under pressure to be more innovative and deliver better customer experience these days. Also, customers want the latest products appearing in the market faster. Over half the respondents in our recent research said that when a new market trend emerges, they want their favorite retailer to make the products available within one month or less. That's an amazing um, short time to actually launch a product. And over half of them uh, would said, said that they would change to a competitor if their overall digital experience didn't manage their expectations. In fact, more in fact, more than half of the shoppers said that they would go to a competitor if their favorite brand or retailer's overall digital experience did, did not match their ex expectations. Making the digital experience richer really matters. And it's actually also a generational thing because we found that uh, this desire to move to a competitor rose to about 60% in the 16 to 24 year old age range. So the digital natives really want to be able to work with companies that can provide them with a rich digital experience. And key to that is actually the, is the content that uh, is delivered, particularly around imagery, photos, videos, also having detailed descriptions of the product, maybe 3D models, and making sure that the content is localized and relevant. And really, that brings us to the point that, you know, Every customer interaction is driven by content. Today, more than ever, it needs to be delivered in multiple formats on multiple platforms. We're talking about a true omni-channel experience. And content related to the products is foundational to part of that experience. Product content really needs to be accurate, relevant, timely, and intelligent. Just again, to reinforce that, the content really needs to be accurate, relevant, timely, and intelligent. You need to connect your product data with your customer data and the visual data content to be an, an, enable delivery of exceptional customer experiences that really drive brand loyalty and help to continue ongoing transactions. But the thing is, the old way of managing content and data really doesn't work anymore. We found that organizations really have multiple systems that grow up organically through the life of an organization, you know, they're put in place to solve particular business problems without thought about how that really fits into the overall flow of information across the across the uh, the, the organization. So you end up with systems that are not connected with each other, and data tends to be stored across multiple silo systems. We found, for instance, uh, in some of the research that we've done, that on average, when people are looking for information, they look across nine different systems on average. That that's a, an awful lot. And that as a result, they're spending almost an hour a day just looking for content, looking for information. Um, perhaps more surprisingly, we find that in 60% of the cases where they won't, can't find it, they actually go and recreate that content. Um, and it just goes back into those siloed data stores and those disconnected systems. So not only are we wasting time looking for information, we're wasting time recreating it. And then we, we are compounding the problem by putting that duplicate information back into product systems without actually realizing that, that we are actually duplicating things. So sync, things may get out of sync, they may be out of date, and they exist in multiple places and are difficult to find. So one way to really help drive and turbocharge the overall creative process is to actually make sure that you're connecting the creative assets with the product data. You're connecting the information that's in your digital asset management system with information that's in something like a, a product information system. So, you know, using the, uh, the digital asset management thing to, to manage your, your images and videos, organize them, put metadata around them, connect it to the, you know, the other systems that like your product life cycle, um, supplier information, marketing information, to make sure that you can then deliver to all your different systems, like your physical stores, maybe an e-commerce site, catalogs, or even making sure that you're linking with your supplier data and or, or sending the right information on to the next company within the product like, product chain. And we call this approach product asset management. It really is this idea of taking your assets and your content just beyond marketing to connect content data 
and your images and assets and videos and 3D files all across the organization to really drive a digital product lifecycle. And based on our experience, we see these seven touch points in the product lifecycle where we believe that, we, that connecting the product data and the content can provide the most value and speed up the time to delivery while providing a consistent customer experience. So if you think about it, the starting point in terms of um, materials, uh, you know, what do you need to actually make the product, designing the product, taking pictures or developing video or assets around the product so you can design your marketing campaign, you can design and build your packaging. And then when you're actually made it and sell it, sold it, uh, making sure that the people in the front line, the people dealing with the customers actually have access to all the content they need and the full product knowledge that they need. And if you think of that in terms of what does that look like with an actual asset, um, what we're really talking about is pulling the data from these different product systems and providing the creative tissue. So if you take a particular normal image and if you look at the top, we have a box that sort of says the image metadata. And this is the sort of stuff that you would typically get in a normal digital asset management system. Technical information about the, about the product that's coming from the cameras, maybe some tags that you've added, and maybe some tags around the product. But really to provide more, more value, we wanna know more about each of those products. So what we wanna do is connect them to those products and pull information from the product systems around, you know, um, what are the component parts? What is it? Uh, what is the audience for it? Uh, you know, which particular campaign do we want to use these that products in and images in? What are the related products that are actually shown in a, in a piece of information? Um, you know, and if we're using a uh, an image of a model, you know, what's what's in her contract? What are the usage rights? Uh, you know, what things that what licensing things we do if we're using third party assets. Um, so we actually want to link the image to these others. And we want to pull information from systems that are not currently integrated and provide that connective tissue between the data and the core content. And this way it provides the project teams across that product life cycle with a complete set of information at the time they need it to do the work they need it or within one unified space. And this is the, uh, the approach that we take at Nuxia with what we call the uh, product asset management. The concept really is this idea of accelerating ideas to the market, making sure that by connecting the content assets to the, to the data throughout the product lifecycle, that we're really building a more efficient digital supply chain that really allows us to increase the value of assets, and particularly in, the, in an environment where you know, um, the shipping of physical products becomes more difficult or impossible, or actually getting pe more people are working remotely, then actually the value of a digital supply chain becomes vital to business continuity. So that's, that's sort of talking about the theory. Let's take a look at some uh, existing real customer examples. So start off, you know, with, with the materials library. Um, you know, working with a materials library in a typically large company requires using a, a range of specialized file types and applications. Uh, you know, you end up with teams across the organization working to scan and test materials and send information on to the downstream teams working in different, often disconnected silos. By taking a product asset management approach with something like the, the Nuxio platform, you can support cataloging, using and modifying those compound files. Um, for instance, materials reference object containing a 3D re rendering of a product image files and examples of a material being used on a previous design could easily be created. Or you could create a digital design environment where designers have full visibility to the updated materials information in their library from every internal or external location where it exists, all working with the context of their design tools. And talking of design, really, you know, samples and prototypes are critical to building, bringing new products to market and selling them to retailers or distribution channels. And if you can accelerate these processes to drive faster, more responsive design cycles, you can decrease the time to market. If you think about a great, a perfect world for a designer would be having every material at their fingertips for analysis and collaboration, all the relevant they need around pricing, availability, and specifications. But things often work differently. You know, often they're working in isolated design tools like Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, or some sort of 3D rendering software. But that can be enhanced with connectivity to the previously mentioned materials reference library information, so the products can, product designers can depend on it. Um, with easy access to a centralized uh, materials library, you know, designers can drag and drop materials into the design. Um, we, uh, using something like a, a platform like Mud, 
next year that uh, allows you to search across different systems. You can do federated searches across the many systems and teams all around the globe, making it easier and faster to discover what if there are actually existing designs that you can modify from other brands or other people have done or things that have been done in the past rather than starting from a, uh, a clean sheet every time. And in today's environment, uh, e-commerce really is now a key strategic focus for more comp most companies with uh, more and more people moving to almost exclusive online purchasing, uh, something that will probably carry on in the future. Um, things the, the product photography and video and imagery really has become key to driving sales in more channels and is more important and vital than ever before. Uh, but unlike the less structured um, environment, you know, Product photo studios are really based around productivity and speed, but often they're, uh, these sort of high throughput processes that they have in place um, are ad hoc and manual. Um, traditionally, photo, stu process, photo studio processes were developed in the early days of digital archiving and photography, and they don't really scale to meet today's demands. But using a platform um, with a product asset management approach really enables teams to search through the files and multiple global repositories and see what they've actually already got in place. It also allows for, uh, you know, approval of um, assets, voting on assets, make, marking up images and video, automatic routing of sensitive material for legal or, or uh, executive review. And by connecting the product information and assets in the upstream process, we can really streamline the business requirements for photo shoots, boosting the photo studio productivity with more complete contextual briefs, as well as in uh, in-platform photo and video annotations, annotations and full audit trails, making the whole process scalable, quicker and more accurate. And when it comes to packaging design, um, you know, we really find that uh, you need things like new products, ingredient changes, rebranding, even the slightest product change can create need for new packaging or need for uh, updating existing packaging. But, uh, and in the packaging environment, this is where we find that the, really the technical and creative information really collides uh, often with distinctly different file formats. Uh, and packaging designers are often called on to localize designs for multiple markets and change specific elements like color, labeling and so forth to create many iterations of the same basic package. So they really need, everybody personally involved in the packaging design review and approval process really needs to see all the information that they need at the same time. They need, need to be able to manage derivatives of packaging design, understand localization, um, and really decrease waste and have a more efficient approval process. Um, so, you know, by connecting images from graphic designers, copy from creatives, product information from the product systems, design briefs with full version history and audit trails to better understand where changes are made, a, a, a product asset management approach can really drive value. Um, also, by having a, a platform that allows a complex multi-threaded approval process from be that voting, pool-based approvals, multi-level executive approval requirements for specific content types. If you've got something that can configure all that, um, it really it does save time. The net at the end of the day is we really want to give each team member in the design process exactly what they need to see without cluttering up the space for the information they don't need. So for things like legal reviews and approvals, this could be done with lower resolution image previews instead of full high-res files, while the graphic designers have access to the uncompressed graphic files and can work down at the pixel level if they need to. And when you have a product and the packaging, we obviously one of the things you want to do is take it to market and looking at how you actually build a the campaigns around that you know marketing campaigns need to be planned and initiated as early as possible in the product life cycle especially in seasonally dependent industries or trend-based industries where you're actually trying to keep up with the market and as we saw at the beginning there is a customer expectation uh, of the, for products and companies to keep up the market very quickly so the marketing team really needs access to the latest product designs imagery specifications and product pro projected availability as early as possible. So if you have a system that searches across the systems and teams on a global basis, it makes it a lot easier and faster for your teams to discover and collate all the campaign material and imagery they need. And again, as we've talked about with the packaging design, if you have a, you know, a multi-threaded uh, parallel 
campaign approval process that includes different types of uh, approval requirements for specific content types, then you can configure that to meet the business workflow rather than imposing the workflow on the business. Uh, marketeers, sales personnel and retailers really do, everybody in the process really does rely on up-to-date accurate product information to make critical decisions on how products are displayed to customers. Uh, for, cust for companies creating complicated diverse product assortments, uh, you know, there are a lot of teams responsible for taking products to market and they struggle with searching through the many different systems for the information we need. We talked about earlier the fact, you know, that on average they're looking across nine different systems. If you have something like an, an Axio platform where we can provide this connective tissue and the federated search, then they can, you can actually link the information into inventory and product information systems, enabling access for brand managers and information specific to products that the, that retailers have purchased. You know, products can be automatically entered into a hub or portal where specific actions are taken um, or when approval processes are complete. And the content hun hungry processes don't stop when products hit the store shelves or e-commerce sites. Sales and customer support teams are a key source of information for consumers during and after purchase. Customers expect more information about products than ever. Legacy systems make it difficult or impossible to, to connect these downstream teams to upstream parts of the process. But by taking this connective product asset management approach, you're really connecting everything from the idea to the manufacturing, through the marketing, to the sales and the customer experience. And that this sort of uh, approach puts up-to-date knowledge at your support team's fingertips. You know, there's no more relying on disconnected searches that are highly dependent on the skill and expertise of the, per the rep or the product knowledge of the rep. Uh, and teams with a high impact on customer experience can access information created at multiple points in the product life cycle from things like specific materials or ingredients to the, down to the retailers who stock a particular product near a customer zip code. And also in terms of actually getting the staff up to speed by having access to the information and visuals throughout the product life cycle, it drastically reduces the time it takes to actually get a customer support person up to speed so they can really deliver effective customer interactions. So these are all uh, great examples. So how do I get there from here? Well, the Nuxio platform approach really enables us to address each of these seven points. Um, what we're looking, what we work on uh, and our approach is to deliver API driven extensions to a centralized content repository and provide the connect, that connective tissue that I talked about between the assets and the business systems to enable significant efficiency gains and improve the information flow with both upstream and downstream processes. So by connecting the existing product data and the content sources, we really get data and content that flows across the product lifecycle. It builds a collaborative environment. You get consistency of message and you really accelerate and turbocharge the overall workflow and the approvals processes that go with them, really drastically reducing the time to market. And by mapping your, your product lifecycle, you really do increase the value of your content throughout that lifecycle. Um, ending in reduced times in each of those seven steps. And if you take that reduction in time in each of those seven steps, it really adds up to a cumulative effect in the overall time to, mar time to market. You're, you can deliver an improved and consistent customer experience, which really drives higher customer engagement and retention. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I hope you found that useful. And uh, 